Hi, this is National Master Dan Heisman, and we're continuing with our series of videos to help you improve your chess. Uh, we've been off for a few days. My computer crashed. I lost all my, pretty much all my uh, applications, including the ones that uh, record the videos and all that kind of stuff. So I've slowly been putting things back together with some help from my friends, and hopefully we'll be up and running today. All right, so let's get on. Today's video, we're going to talk about the most common opening inaccuracies. Now, an opening inaccuracy is not like a trap. A trap is a clear-out blunder where you, you fall into a move that looks reasonable, but it actually it's not, and you end up losing something. So let's show you a trap to start with because that's not the form. Let's take the famous trap in the Cambridge Springs, d4, knight f6. C4, E6, Knight C3, D5, transposing into Queen's Gambit, Bishop G5, Knight BD7. All right, so beginners look at this and they say, oh, look, this pawn on D5, it's attacked twice, and it's guarded once, but the Knight can't take it because it's pinned to the Queen, so I can win a pawn. And they play pawn takes, pawn takes, Knight takes D5. And if Black knows this trap, he'll say, sure, you can have my Queen, Knight takes D5. Bishop takes d8, bishop b4 check, regaining the queen, queen d2, and now the most accurate move for black is thanks for the extra bishop, king takes d8. So now white has won a knight on d5 and a bishop on d8, and <clears throat> he's going to have to give up a bishop for the queen, but that means he'll end up a piece ahead when the smoke clears. For instance, e4, bishop takes d2, king takes d2. Knight f6, and black has a piece for a pawn. So that's not an inaccuracy. That's a trap. In today's video, we're going to talk about inaccuracies. How do you know you have an inaccuracy? Well, at the start of a game, the computer shows you have a certain value, and when that value drops, if it drops by, like, a pawn or more, you've probably fallen into a trap. But if it drops by, like, half a pawn or six or seven tenths, it, you're probably playing an inaccuracy. So let's take a look at some of the most famous opening inaccuracies. And we'll start with the granddad of them all, which also comes out of the Queen's Gambit. Here's the Queen's Gambit. And the three main moves for black here are e6, c6, Slav, and pawn takes, Queen's Gambit accepted. Now a lot of people get confused because the second most common defense to d4 is knight f6, and after c4, then black usually plays like e6 or g6 or c5. But suppose white plays d4, d5, c4, and black plays knight f6 to keep guarding the pawn, a very, very common move among beginners. Notice this position is exactly the same position by transposition as d4, knight f6, c4, d5. So it's the same mistake, basically, on the second move by black in either case. But you reach this position. Why is this position an inaccuracy? Well, let, let's show you that it is an inaccuracy. Let's ask the computer to evaluate the position after d4, d5, c4. We'll turn the computer on. I'll bring the computer's analysis up a little bit. Okay, well, let's hit the analysis. And I need to open the window a little bit so I can control it. Start. Okay, so if we look at the evaluation here on the left, right now it says plus <clears throat> zero, zero, 001, and it's jumping around. Now it's 0 0.11. That's about right for a normal opening, 0.1 advantage for white. But watch what happens when I put the knight on f6 here for black. Boom! It jumps from 0.1 to 0.7. 0.7, that's a really big difference. And not only that, if white takes the pawn and black doesn't gambit a pawn here with c6 and he plays knight f6, now the advantage, I said knight f6, but knight on f6 takes d5. Now the advantage you can see is jumped to over 1 for white. Well, that's almost in the category of trap rather than inaccuracy, but... This is a really bad thing for black. Let's explain why. d4, d5, c4. White's threatening to take the pawn, and if the queen takes, attack it with a knight, awl. If you missed my earlier video on awl, I highly recommend it. 
AWL stands for attack it with something worth less. So, so here, if black does nothing with h6, white should play c takes d, queen takes d, knight c3, hitting the queen, and as we call it, sort of gaining a tempo, as we say, because we're putting the knight on a better square. And the queen would love to stay on d5, but he has to go to some other square. Not good. Okay, so that's the threat, and that's why black plays e6, queen's gambit declined, or c6 slav, so he can recapture with a pawn, or he takes the pawn. But if he plays knight f6, it really doesn't stop things. White can play c takes d, knight takes d5, and now what should white play? Well, when I was learning this, this inaccuracy, they taught me to play knight f3 first here, followed by e4. And indeed, you can see right now Stockfish is recommending that move, knight f3, and now on the next move, it's practically impossible to stop e4. I mean, black can play bishop f5, but after knight bd2 not allowing the knight to trade off on d5, threatening e4, white's got a pretty nice advantage here. He could also play queen to b3, hitting the light squares on the queen side when the bishop comes out. In either case, with a pretty big advantage. And normally, black plays something like knight c6 here, and then white plays e4. Most people who know this trap, they play e4 right away. And if you notice, Stockfish 10 says knight f3 is plus 0.76. e4 is plus point, uh, about 7 now. So it's almost as good. So e4 is almost as good. The problem is, and I've studied this position for hours with the computer, the problem is if you play e4 and black plays perfectly, it gets a little complicated and it's not so easy for white to prove the advantage. On the other hand, if you play knight f3 followed by e4, things are rather trivial. White has a pretty big advantage without that many complications at all. Why does white play knight f3? Because if he plays e4 and black plays knight f6 hitting the pawn, if white pushes the pawn and black goes into the weak d5 square, black's doing okay, although the computer still says plus one. And if white plays knight c3, black can play the break move e5. When if white takes the pawn, black will simply take the queen. And if white takes back with the king, then knight g4 threatens f2 and e5 and wins the pawn back. So this gets a little complicated. It's much easier for white to just play knight f3 first and then threaten to play e4 with a big advantage. Let me show you a game I once saw in this opening. White understood what was going on here, played knight f3 first. Black played knight c6. White played e4. Black played knight c6, white played knight c3. So notice now e5 is not possible because pawn takes. Also, black, white could even try to play d5 in this case too. They're both, let's see which one the computer likes. Computer likes d5 better. Knight b8, knight takes e5, winning a pawn. Okay, so in this position, uh, Black played bishop g4, threatening to remove the guard and take the d4 pawn. White saved the d4 pawn with d5. Black played knight e5. So I looked at this position and I said, hmm, I bet I know what I would do here. And White thought for a while and he played bishop e2 with a nice little advantage, 1.62. But you can see what the computer wants to play. The computer says, queen, what queen? Knight takes e5, that's the move I was looking at. Bishop takes d1, bishop b5 check, c6 forced, otherwise you lose the queen right away, d takes c6, and now white threatens c takes b7 discovered check and c7 discovered check, and black has no defense. Um, the computer says black's best move is a6, c7 check, a takes b5, c takes d8 queen, Rook takes d8, knight takes d1, and white's up a piece. So that's the line I was looking at. Let's go through this again in slow motion instant replay. d4, d5, c4, knight f6 question mark, c takes d, knight takes d5, knight f3, knight c6, e4, knight f6, knight c3, bishop g4, d5. So here black cannot play knight e5, but he did. And now if white wants to win the game right away, knight takes e5, and white wins. But that, that's not part of the inaccuracy. The inaccuracy is simply...
playing the knight to f6 here. Combining the Indian defense with the classical queen's gambit doesn't work. You, you can't play that. I've seen this played a billion times. I, I once had a student, he said he had hundreds of books and he'd been playing serious chess for about 20 years. And we, the first game we went over, he was black and he played this defense. And I said, I said, is this what you play against d4? And he said, yep. And I said, are you aware that this is not really a defense? And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, it's a famous inaccuracy. He says, I don't understand. I've been playing this for 20 years. I said, yeah, it's called the martial defense. It's not very good. White just takes the pawn and you get a bad game. He said, well, that's what I've been playing. And I said, you said you have a couple hundred books. Did you ever look up this opening in one of the books? And he said, well, no. <laughs> and of course, I tell my students after each game, look up your game and see what you would do differently next time. Well, if he tried to look this up in a book, I think in MCO 10, which was my first big opening book, um, if you tried to look this up in a book, it's a little footnote basically saying black shouldn't do this. <laughs> this is no good. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, merit an entire chapter or a section or a line or anything. It gets a little footnote in the book saying, don't do this for black. All right, let's look at some other famous inaccuracies. Let's look at the one in the Roy Lopez where white can win a pawn if black's not paying attention. So here, after a6, the reason black can play a6 right away is bishop takes d5, c takes, sorry, bishop takes c6, d takes c6, knight takes e5 is no good because of queen d4 double attacking the pawn in the knight. But suppose black thinks he's good forever with that. And after e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop e7, rook e1. Once white guards this e pawn, that's a sign to black that bishop takes c6 followed by knight takes e5 is on. So black should stop that by not allowing the removal of the guard with b5. But a lot of players for black here just castle. And I've seen white very often play the mistake c3, trying to like transpose back into the main line. But white shouldn't transpose into the main line. He should play bishop takes c6, d takes c6, knight takes e5. And now if queen d4, knight f3 hits the queen, but the queen can't take the pawn because the rook's guarding it. And I've actually seen people make the tremendous mistake bishop g4. If you don't know why that's a mistake, stop the video and see if you can figure it out. The answer is... Knight takes d4, bishop takes d1, rook takes e1. What kind of tactic is that? Well, it's a counting tactic. A counting tactic is where you look at a series of exchanges and they can win material or lose material. If the counting comes out where you're not winning or losing material, then it's not a tactic. Just as if you, if you pin a piece and you're not winning or losing material, it's not a tactic. It's still a pin, but it's not a tactic. In this case, the counting is a tactic because you are winning material. The counting says... White gets a queen, black gets a queen, white gets a bishop. Net result, white wins a bishop. So that means after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, here white cannot remove the guard and win the pawn. But after these moves, bishop e7, rook e1, now black is threatened with bishop takes knight. He needs to save this pawn. He needs to either play d6 like a Steinitz doubly delayed or the main line, b5. But he can't play castles. Bishop takes c6, b takes c6, knight takes e5. And you can see the computer evaluation has him up 1.2. All right, let's move the computer evaluation back down. You don't need to see that. We can make a bigger screen for it. But you'll see in all these inaccuracies, if you turn on the engine like I did, that the, the, the value will drop. All right, another inaccuracy I see is in queen's gambit decline kind of positions, black brings out his queen bishop too soon. So let's look at a line in the Slav. d4, d5, c4, c6. Normally white here plays knight f3, nothing wrong with playing knight c3 first. And now black, if black wants to play a regular Slav, he can play knight f6, and he could probably transpose into a semi-Slav with e6. But a lot of people who don't know a lot about the openings, they don't study the lines, they say, I don't want to play e6. I want to get my bishop out first, and then I want to play e6 so my bishop's not trapped. Well, that's a very noble thought, 
And normally that kind of thinking is, is good thinking, but in here, you want to look this up and see whether this works. And the problem with playing bishop f5 is white can play something like pawn takes, pawn takes, and queen b3, attacking the d pawn twice, and attacking the, the b pawn. And black's already in some trouble here. Um, well, this double attack is uh, not stoppable. This is this kind of reason where white can take on d5 and play queen b3 actually refutes a lot of bishop f5s in queen's gambits. And I just wanted to pick this one out because it was relatively clear. But anytime your opponent plays an early bishop move, and it could even be bishop to g4, if he brings out his bishop to the center, like bishop g4, or bishop f5, then very often playing c takes d, c takes d, queen b3 is good. Let's show you that again. d4, d5, c4, c6, knight c3, bishop f5, pawn takes, pawn takes, queen b3. Very common way to play against those early bishop moves. Okay, so that's an inaccuracy on black's part. Uh, let's look at an accuracy on white's part. Two knights defense. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. And now the two most common moves are bishop c5, joko piano, which is what all the GMs play now. And knight f6, two knights, which is a little tricky. And when you play knight f6, if you look this up, the number one move and the move that the computers like and the grandmasters like, it looks like a beginner's move, is knight to g5. This is the main line. I've heard a lot of people erroneously call this the fried liver attack. This is not the fried liver attack. The fried liver attack is a trap that black can fall into later in the two knights. The fried liver attack is if black plays d5, which is the main move, and white plays d e takes d5. Now black's supposed to play knight a5. That's the main move. The second and third moves are knight d4, and believe it or not, b5, which is the move that Hans Berliner used to win the World Correspondence Championship back in like 1969. Um, but the trap is if you take the pawn and black plays the natural knight takes d5, that's a trap. Now white plays knight takes f7. This is the fried liver attack. Playing knight g5 is not the fried liver attack. It's only when black plays knight takes d5 on the fifth move. This is not a, really an inaccuracy. This is almost a trap because the computer here has white, you know, way ahead after king f7, queen f3, king e6, knight c3, knight 6 b4, and now white can either play castles, which John Edwards wrote an article in Chess Life about, or just bishop to b3, threatening a3. And black's got some pretty big tr troubles here. But let's say white doesn't know about knight g5. Well, the second most popular move here is to play d4, which is the max lying attack. But white very often doesn't know any of these lines, and he just sees that his pawn is attacked, and he plays the very inaccurate move, knight to c3. Uh, Grandmaster, uh, um, Grandmaster Polgar uh, wrote a two-part article on this um, in Chess Life about a dozen years ago. Uh, Susan Polgar. Okay, so the what should black do here? Black should play the center fork trick. Knight takes e4. If white plays knight takes e4, then d5 gets the piece back and black has full equality. Even worse for white is to give up the bishop pair trying to stop black from castling. Knight takes e4, d5, knight g5, check, king g6, and black's soon going to play h6 with a monster center and the bishop pair here. So this is a really bad line for white. So the famous inaccuracy again is e4, e5, knight f3, Knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight c3, inaccurate. Knight takes e e4, best refutation, center fork trick. White is nothing better than knight takes d5. And now he could also play bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, d3. And black's doing very well with the bishop pair in a nice center. Okay, let's look at inaccuracy in the French. e4, e6. The general rule is if your opponent doesn't stop you from playing d4 after e4, for instance, if black plays e5, then d4 is a little bit questionable because after pawn takes, you either have to play it some sort of Danish gambit or a delayed knight f3 because if queen takes knight c6, we've got that awl move again, attack with something worth less, where white, quote, loses a tempo. 
So e5 is meant to discourage an immediate d4. That's why knight f3 is the main move. But if black plays a move like e6, then knight f3 is not the main move. d4 is. If, if white plays knight f3, the reason why that's a little inaccurate is when black plays d5, he's hitting the pawn on e4, which means white can't play d4 now. He loses a pawn. But if he, but if he saves the pawn with pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, he's transposing into the exchange variation of the French, which is considered rather innocuous with the open e file where the major pieces often get traded. Sorry about that. Got to fix the board a little bit. There we go. If, um, on the other hand, if white pushes past, a lot of beginners like to do that. They love getting space. Then black plays c5, hitting this pawn. And now if white plays d4, white, black will trade a side pawn for the center pawn and destroy a defender of the e5 square. And if white first plays c3, black has a very nice choice. If he wants to transpose into the advanced variation of the French, which is perfectly good with knight c6, d4, he can do that. Or he can play the provocative move d4 himself, trying to prevent white from playing d4. Let's ask the computer which line he likes here after c3. Stockfish 10, what do you want to play here for black? Uh, he's looking at d4. He's looking at the interesting move knight e7. He says black is fully equal here, which of course is why white shouldn't be playing knight f3 to begin with. Okay, so the inaccuracy here for white is after e4, e6, you want to play d4. gives you a lot more options. After d5, you can play the main line with knight c3. You can play the Tarish with knight d2. But if you play e4, e6, knight f3, unless you love playing the exchange variation, pawn takes pawn, uh, this isn't going to be all that wonderful for white. So that's another common inaccuracy. All right, let's let's show a little. Let's show a let's show one that's almost more than an accuracy. Let's show one that's a little bit of a trap in the Peart's defense. D4, knight f6. One of my friends has fallen into this trap so many times. So bishop g7, and now white. His main move here is to play either bishop e2 or h3. But let's say he plays the quote aggressive bishop c4. What black should just do here is play castle and threaten knight takes e4, knight takes e4, d5 with equality in the center fork trick. Let's say black blunders, though. This time we're going to actually fall into a trap and plays knight bd7. This is white to play and win. This is more than, a, more than a, an accuracy. This is a trap. So we're a little outside the scope of our video, but when I was making a list, I said, ah, this is kind of a cute one to show because it happens so often. There's two ways for white to win. The way that I'm most familiar with is bishop f7 check. If king takes f7, knight g5 check. And now if he plays king e8, we trap the queen. If he plays king f8, we trap, we fork the queen and we win the queen. And if he plays king g8, we hit the queen. If the queen goes to its only safe square, we fork the queen and the rook. Queen comes back. We take the rook. And even if black can trap this knight, white's going to have really good play here in this position. White's already got enough material, and black's time he's going to take to win that knight and the awkwardness of his king leave white with a fantastic position. The other way that white can win, which I didn't know as much about till I was preparing this video, is to play another move, which is to play e5. And now if the knight goes to g8, there's no square on g8 for the king to go to. So bishop takes f7, king takes f7, knight g5 will win the queen right away. King f8, knight e6, king e8, knight e6, winning the queen in either case. And black can't play king f8 here because of knight g5 anyway, threatening knight here. Let's say black now moves the knight out of the way to, to hold the square. Oh, white can just play moves like queen f3 with... He's already won a pawn, black can't castle, and he's got a monster attack. So the computer gives knight to h5, but the knight has no moves on h5. So white can simply play something like bishop f7 check, king f7, knight g5 check, king g8, and he can play knight e8 again. Queen e8, same thing we saw before. 
Or white could, in this position, I think he can simply play g4, right? Yeah, although knight b6 makes it a little complicated. So more accurate is to play knight g5, and if e6, stopping the capture, now play g4. Much better, because now knight b6 doesn't attack the pawn with the, with the bishop. So we're, white's just winning a knight here. All right, let's look at one last inaccuracy. White plays e4, black plays Sicilian, white plays knight f3, black plays c knight c6, and white plays d4. Well, this is a break move, and any time, the general principle is any time someone breaks with a center pawn, and you could take with a side pawn, and they can't take back with a pawn, you should almost always take. And this is no exception. Black should do exactly what he wants to do here, which is trade the side pawn for the center pawn. But let's say black doesn't know that. Let's say he's a new Sicilian player. And he says, all right, I'll just guard my pawn with e6. Well, this is kind of a disaster. White should play d5. I've had so many of my students not play d5 here. And the general principle is anytime you can AWL someone, attack them with something worth less, and the knight has no good central squares to go to, you should almost always do this. Let's show you how quickly black can lose here. Now, black's already lost, according to the computer, but let's see how bad it can get. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Let's say he tries to keep the knight in the center. D6, knight f5, queen e2 check. Bye bye piece. The only way to get out of check is to put a piece on e7, or e6, e3 in this case. <clears throat> and white wins a piece. Bishop e7, d takes e7, knight g e7. The computer now wants to play g4. And white's ahead by four pawns. So again, the common inaccuracy here is for white, for white to play open Sicilian and black not to take the pawn. e6, d5, even if black doesn't, doesn't take here. Suppose black plays <clears throat> knight to b4, just trying to be safe. Then white should awl that knight with a3. The knight goes back to a6. White's going to play d6 to block that diagonal so the bishop can't come out. And now black's got a problem. If he tries to play queen b6, hitting this pawn again, white can play e5. If black tries to undermine the pawns with f6, now white plays a move that I probably wouldn't find. Stockfish says white should play knight f d2. If black takes the pawn, queen h5 check. He can't play g6 because queen takes e5. King d8, knight c4, hitting the queen and guarding the pawn. Knight f6, counterattacking the queen. Bishop g5, pinning the knight. Save the queen. Queen h4, hitting the knight. And the computer says white's up eight pawns. So again, this final inaccuracy is... In some of these lines in the open Sicilian, black has to take this pawn. Let's say he plays d6. Well, Stockfish says again, awl. Notice if knight e5 now, white just plays knight takes e5, d takes e5. And he could even play queen h5 here, hitting this pawn, which is tough to guard. For instance, queen d6, bishop b5 check. Bishop d7, bishop takes d7. If he takes with the queen, he loses a pawn. If he takes with the king, white could even play queen takes f7, or he can just go after the king with knight to a3. Huge advantage for white. Okay, so today we've gone over a bunch of inaccuracies, and we actually threw in a couple traps for fun. You can see the difference between the traps and the inaccuracies. And in the accuracies, White's advantage goes up from like two tenths of a pawn to like six or seven or eight tenths of a pawn or maybe slightly more. When he play, when he actually falls into the traps, then then a lot of times White's up, you know, one and a half, two pawns or more. So, but a lot of these lines that I'm showing you are just inaccuracies and they're played all the time. I see them. I have new students. They show me their games, and I say to them, "Did you realize this opening is not really an opening? Did you ever look it up?" And they say, "No," and I say, "Well, let's talk." All right, for uh, YouTube, this is my YouTube channel. I'm Dan Heisman. If you enjoy it, tell your friends, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it today. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.